welcome back to the channel everybody um got like a different type of reaction video for you but long story short i've seen other people make reaction videos to star wars hot takes so i thought i'd do my own um two things before we get started is that if you have any of your own hot takes let me know in the comments down below and i have three of my own which i will say at the end of this video and if you would like to rip those apart feel free to anyway one more thing is that i do not go and attack anybody that's giving a take that you might not agree on um that's not what we're here about anyway going straight into it here from reddit what is your star wars hot take going right in <laughs> i see the words rogue one and I, I i already know that okay while rogue one is good i find it to be overrated honestly um the movie is good but i kind of get bored when i see it honestly you can't remember the names of any of the characters because they can't stick in my mind now <sighs> my opinion on this take is that it's an interesting one and it's not one that i've that i've that i'm very used to seeing right for me my opinion is that rogue one doesn't get the attention that it should not that like it's over or underrated or that a lot of people aren't watching it, but I feel like the attention that it gets is people are talking about the Vader hallway scene and they talk about the third act, which don't get me wrong. That is very, very good Star Wars. Great Star Wars. Some of the best Star Wars I've ever seen, right? It felt like Star Wars in the theater, watching them destroy that disc shield and all that stuff that felt like Star Wars again, all that stuff in the third act. Amazing. Great. But I don't see a lot of people talking about what and how important Rogue One is to the story of Star Wars, right? It's probably the most important part of Star Wars next to the first six films. Um, so this, I understand that they could see it overrated. Um, the movie is good. I Like I said, I find it to be one of the most important pieces of Star Wars. Um, but that's that's their take uh next take is i don't think boba fett is that cool now this was this 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 post was made five months ago this whole subreddit was made five five months ago um and i gotta agree and this this sucks because you know my boba fett helmet and whatnot but the thing that inspired me to cosplay boba fett was obviously mando season two um jango is my f top three favorite star wars characters and I feel like they brought they brought hype to the Fett name, right? In Mando season two. Book of Boba Fett, I'm not gonna go off on a whole spiel. Book of Boba just took him three steps back with Boba Fett. Now if he comes back, he has to just like claw and grind his way back like he originally had to do. And that sucks. That sucks to me because like in the book of Boba Fett, obviously Boba does really badass stuff. But then also he gets his butt kicked and you're like, why is this happening? Well, why is he kicking butt now when he was just getting his butt kicked? Like he was riding off the legacy of Boba Fett already. Just add on to that. Like I understand they were trying to give him depth and trying to give him, give him character development. But like he had all the character development we needed to see when he agreed to help Mando because he got his armor back. That's that was enough for me it's like okay boba fett is he's doing the right thing okay cool dope grand um but i i i can agree with this boba definitely has taken a hit um next take here is that star wars shows and movies should branch out into more genres into more genres okay with new characters and or proves that this works okay i agree that it should branch out with new characters right um, but genres, I don't know if that's the correct term because like Star Wars is sci-fi. The genre is sci-fi, um, science fiction. And I, do they mean like anime or whatever? I don't know. Um, but I agree. I agree with this take. Uh, next one is having reoccurring characters makes the universe seem tiny. And I agree with this. While it is so fun and cool to see these animated characters that we love come up into live action, I think it's amazing. I think there should be the time where we introduce new fans or fans, obviously like my parents, who haven't really kept up with Star Wars since the 70s and the 80s and 
obviously with the prequels because you know they raised me i was raised on the prequels but who haven't seen the animated shows and all that stuff i don't see that as a bad thing to bring in characters like ahsoka bo katan the rebels characters all that stuff right but there needs to be a point where you let the new characters breathe and obviously we've had a ton of new characters since the force awakens drop since disney took over but a large majority of those characters just they just aren't written well unfortunately so i i agree with this like it's it's wild that luke skywalker and ahsoka and bo katan and boba fett and fennec obviously fennec was a mando introduction but anyway that those huge names within star wars ran into din jaren in the same year right now there was an interview um that i saw if i can find it I'll, I'll link it down below but dave filoni and john favreau said that mando season two they wanted to kind of incorporate that din was the watcher meeting these characters but also that they wanted to introduce these characters into live action and all that good stuff i think it might have been the round table that they did if i can remember correctly but don't quote me Anyway, I agree. I agree. It's just really convenient that Din is meeting all of these characters and he's the intro. Like, he's just, he's the intro boy now. Um, next one is that Star Wars, a lot of Star Wars fans don't really care about stories and mostly want a compilation of badass moments. The Last Jedi works perfectly as a sequel to The Force Awakens, in my opinion. It's The Rise of Skywalker that completely drops the ball. Every Star Wars movie completely falls apart if viewed under the same lens some people use for The Last Jedi. Um, I don't, so I, I agree with this. A lot of people just want blaster fight here, lightsaber fight there, which uh, one hot take is that that's what some people come to Star Wars to see. It's not what I come to Star Wars to see, but there are plenty of people like the young kids, my nephews who go to Star, to go to Star Wars movies or watch Star Wars shows they really just don't care about the politics behind whatever's happening in Star Wars. They care about their favorite bad guy killing their least favorite good guy or their favorite good guy killing their least favorite bad guy and the lightsabers and all that stuff. But when you have us older fans, and there's the people, again, the people who just go to the movies to see some lightsabers and stuff like that, I understand that. But I also want a good story too. This is the take I don't really agree with because they say The Last Jedi works perfectly as a sequel to The Force Awakens. The part I disagree with is that The Last Jedi should not work perfectly as a sequel to The Force Awakens. It should work as a sequel to the first six films, which is what they are. Now, to me, in short, because I could rant about The Last Jedi till I'm freaking green in the face, but... The Last Jedi does not build on anything that The Force Awakens created. Unlike the first six movies, every movie built upon what happened in the last movie. The sequels are just a mess, but The Last Jedi could have knocked it out of the park. The Rise of Skywalker, to me, really just ignores a lot of The Last Jedi because it wasn't supposed to be... The Last Jedi wasn't supposed to be the way The Last Jedi was. Um, but anyway, that's my take. The Last Jedi shouldn't work as a sequel to one movie when you're a sequel in a huge saga of films. Anyway, next one is Disney is the best thing to happen to Star Wars. Now, I hope this is a joke. But also, it's hard to disagree that Disney, while there has been some great stuff that's come out because of Disney, one that, you know, Mando and, you know, I'm not going to give you my list of things that I like that Disney has put out. But also, it's, it's, it's fitty fitty for me. Um, this, this isn't a take, this is a con, I guess it is technically a take. Uh, people wax poetic about legends, uh, but the truth is that it was largely discombobulated mess. Disney saying that it was no longer canon has been superb and it's far easier to put everything together. Okay, what I'm going to do right quick is there, uh, people hate when I bring this up. People absolutely lose their mind when I bring up this point. People hate that, that this is a thing, right? But I'm going to bring up an interview from George Lucas 
in 2005 where he talks about the EU. When Star Wars is at like the peak of its creativity, when Revenge of the Sith coming out being the last thing, this is what George Lucas had to say about Legends. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, sorry for the blinding white light, but if you want to read this section, it's from up here to down here. You can pause it to read it yourself. I've read it like a hundred times in other videos, but I'm going to go back here. George Lucas didn't consider them part of his story. Now, I see a lot of people say, well, he never mentioned the word canon. He never this, he never that or whatever. He said they weren't part of his vision or his story. They say the first six movies are what he considered. Yes, he helped on some things, but also like Legends is a bunch of diff. The reason I see this per person saying it's discombobulated is because Legends doesn't follow the same story. One, there's multiple stories of Boba Fett coming out of the Sarlacc pit. It's not multiple times that Boba has fallen in the Sarlacc pit, which in one story he did, but there are different peoples and different authors takes on Boba Fett getting out of the Sarlacc pit, which is why I can see that they say it's discombobulated, but also it, George didn't consider the EU and legends, which are technically the same thing to be canon or part of his story. And a lot of people deem something not part of George Lucas's story, not canon. Um, I've never seen anything about Disney saying that it was no longer canon, but obviously they're kind of going in that direction, especially with Revan. Like Revan was a big step. But anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, this I I see this take. I see that, you know, people saying that, you know, legends essentially, you know, it's discombobulated, they wax poetic and all that stuff. Legends has some great stuff, but also has stinkers. Um, I wish I'd implement more legend stuff, but you know, whatever. But that's not, that's not this video. Next take, uh, let's go down here a little bit. Don't take it so seriously. It's just a movie slash show. I agree with this, but also no, <laughs> I'm taking it seriously. Uh, Bad Batch is the most consistently good animated series. Plus, it it looks the best for its entire run. Tales of the Jedi considered uh, also could fit this. But what is it? Also, COD fit this? Uh, whatever. It's also very short. I am not a fan of the Bad Batch. Maybe for me... This, this is a hot take that animated Star Wars just isn't hitting for me right now. Um, but, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. The Bad Batch to me is just another retelling of a young ward or a young character hanging out and getting close to these older rough and tough types like Din, like Joel and Ellie, like Ahsoka, like like however, like however many times we've already seen this story rehashed. It, that's just what it feels like to me. That's that's just what it felt like to me. Um, so I, I just didn't care for the Bad Batch. I don't care to watch it. Next one. Let's see if I can find a good one. Okay. The Skywalker story is done. We, de we don't need to hear more about it. Now, this is going to go into my last hot take, right? Um, for me, one of the big things is that the Skywalker story should have ended with Luke Skywalker like it did in episode six. But here's my, I'll get into my, my hotter take about this, this situation at the end. But I agree with this. The Skywalker story is done. Let it be done. Let it be done. Unless you're like, I like, I like the callbacks and the flashbacks and the stories telling stuff about Anakin and Vader between episodes three and four. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. But we don't need to get more cash cow milking off of Mark Hamill, please. Next one is the people who blindly love every single piece of Star Wars content are just just as annoying and harmful as the people who constantly hate on Star Wars content. I feel they play a role among greed as well in things like Battlefront 2 being attempted. Um, this doesn't include people who harass actors or racist, sexist, etc., they are the worst. I don't know what they mean about Battlefront 2 being attempted, but I agree with this part right here. Do not attack the actors. Don't be sexist. Don't be racist. Don't be any of that stuff. The actors were hired to do a job. Daisy Ridley 
said in an interview that people feel a strong way about Star Wars. And she said, I'm just doing my job, right? She was hired. I, you need, people need, Star Wars fans need to separate the actor from the character because when Hayden Christensen walks off set, he's not Anakin Skywalker. When Daisy Ridley walks off set and they call cut, she's not Rey. These are human beings. That's my biggest gripe with the fans. Ever since the Ahmed Best stuff, ever since the Jake Lloyd stuff, I, I just cannot, cannot stand that. I do agree that people who blindly love every single piece of Star Wars content are just as annoying as harmful, all that good stuff. I agree with that, but also if you do love it and it's, it's your vibe, then okay, good for you but don't attack people who dislike something and have a legit criticism about something because you just blindly love everything. Also don't attack people who blindly hate everything or people who blindly hate everything. Don't attack people who do like something that you don't like. Uh, next one is you don't have to right here. You don't have to enjoy all star Wars content to enjoy star Wars. I agree. Star Wars to me right now is starting to feel like the MCU. I could miss something and not care and not fall behind in the story. Like with Ahsoka, like right now, Star Wars, you can go onto a onto YouTube, look up a clip, 52 minutes long clip, and then boom, you're caught up with whatever is happening right in front of you. It's like, okay, cool. You don't really now need to know everything that's happening because it's not one consistent story, especially when they're jumping between eras. Like, if you're watching the first six films or the first nine films, I can understand that. But also, you, with how the sequels went, you don't even need to watch the first six movies to understand the first, they're the last three, because the last three really honestly don't even, like, have their own story that they're telling. But I feel nowadays you don't really need to enjoy all of Star Wars or need to care for all of Star Wars to enjoy Star Wars. Uh, my hot take is that I like Jar Jar and I see nothing wrong with his character. That's one of my biggest things. I love The Phantom Menace. It is my favorite Star Wars movie next to A New Hope. Um, and I just like all of us prequel fans as kids, we were quoting Jar Jar Binks. Don't tell me that you weren't. Don't tell me that you weren't. Let's see. Uh, Star Wars can't keep relying on OT characters to carry new shows if it's going to have any chance at a meaningful meaningful future. De-aging original actors and replacing them with CGI for cheap fan service will never be as good as original characters and stories in my opinion. Again, I'll get in I'll get into this take here, but I agree with this one right here. Um let's see. Andor is the worst thing to happen to Star Wars, not because it's bad, um it's not bad at all but because a portion of the fan base wants everything to be like it. It's not, it's not what Star Wars is. Star Wars is meant for kids after all. Okay, the Star Wars is meant for kids take, like first I'm gonna, I'm gonna tackle that one. The Star Wars is meant for kids take, for me, for me, right? Is that it is accurate because that's what George Lucas said, but also, the kids that are watching it now are going to grow up and have the same passion for it when they grow up, right? Just like I did, just like all of us did. So it's meant for kids, but it's also meant for the kid and all of us. So it's not that you get to a certain age and you can't enjoy Star Wars anymore. On top of that, Andor, Andor, while Andor wasn't, the story wasn't my vibe. The story of Cassie and Andor, not really my vibe, but I love the lower level, grittier, down grounded story of star wars i love that stuff ever since playing knights of the old republic 2 and you go to the lower levels and all that good grimy stuff i love a good just gritty story lower level story i love that so i don't think it's the worst thing to happen to star wars i think the worst thing to happen to star wars was ryan johnson but you know uh i'm gonna do a couple more takes a couple more takes um Return of the Jedi is the best of the original trilogy. People who claim otherwise are weird. I think that it's probably one of the f most fun Star Wars movies, but the best to me, I'm going to get a lot of hate. I don't care for 
the first however long the whole saving Han thing is for <laughs> for uh Return of the Jedi. They send in R2 and C3PO. No, they send in Leia. And Leia No, sorry. They send in the droids. They get captured. They send in Leia. She gets and and she gets captured. Chewie's in there, captured. Luke goes in there just to get captured. Why didn't they send in Leia and then Luke goes in with the droids and is like, hey, here's these droids instead of sending sending the hologram, right? Just why didn't he just go in? I don't know. That whole beginning scene to me, as, even as a kid, I always wanted to skip because A, the Rancor was scary to me as a kid. Jabba was scary. Bib Fortuna was scary. But also, I'm like, I just want to get to like the, the, the greenness, the vegetation. The, you know, like I really, really enjoy after the the rescuing han stuff which y'all everybody needs to give lando props he went back and saved his homie even though han had to save lando from going into the sarlacc pit but also the sarlacc pit grabbed the slave one and pulled it in and lando was able just to hold on to han's freaking staff anyway getting off subject um i don't think it's the best and this is another one of my takes i'll give at the end of the video let me find one more take. Um, let's see. Let me find one and I'll get back with y'all. Found it right here. This one reads, Star Wars is currently devoid of any tension or threat and desperately needs to regain it. Only Andor has done it well recently. The Clone Wars Rebels Mandalorian more season two than season three more season two than season three and one ahsoka etc etc all struggles massively with this just because it's aimed at kids slash teens doesn't mean you have to remove the threat from the main cast character deaths are rare and true consequences are even rarer in star wars right now and it frankly makes most of the shows extremely predictable and boring. The Separatists, Empire, and First Order are often treated more like comic relief. Oh, excuse me. An action scene spectacle than an actual threat. And when the main cast is constantly cracking jokes or making fun of them, it really breaks any suspension of disbelief in how these guys are even powerful enough to be villains in the first place i just made a comment after the latest ahsoka episode about how many chase scenes we've gotten a with space superiority craft chasing a mystery machine van and failing to do any damage sometimes we get multiple of these chase chases in a show or season insert quip about shield failing and getting lucky shot a few of one of the chase chasing fighters crashing into debris and another one of the fighters repeat uh, ad nauseum Andor is a character who we know has to live to rogue one yet season one has more tension for him and the people around him than any other show both the heist in the beginning and the amazing prison arc and the surprising end same with rogue one the main character the main cast isn't invulnerable yes sorry not meaning to be biased right now and all of them die along with a large portion of the rebel of reinforcements it actually makes you feel like their stakes are involved with you know galactic civil war there is enough blank writing on Andor and Rogue One to go a lifetime, but that's also the reason that they will age very well as time goes on. The animated series get more of a pass because it's cartoons, but season two and three of The Mandalorian really let me down in that category, and Kenobi was especially terrible with it. I still like these shows and will watch them, but I'm tired of characters not suffering consequences or being threatened. Now, this is, I don't think this is a hot take. I think this is really, really valid, right? Just gonna give a short answer before I get into my takes that I agree with this. I agree that there's, that nobody is suffering, that death isn't permanent, that we shouldn't, like, we should, especially the way movies are nowadays and, and media is nowadays, especially since the MCU and all that good stuff, people just don't, there's no threat. There's no, oh crap, Moff Gideon, like when, 
the dark troopers came down to take Grogu. That was the last time I felt, I felt tension. I was on the edge of my seat. I wasn't caring about if Luke's gonna show up. I wasn't caring about what cameo is gonna show up. I was worried that this character that we spent two seasons with is uh, might be harmed by the by the bad guy. I feel like Moff Gideon lost all his momentum in season three when we found out he was cloning himself. But again, now people are even speculating that Moff Gideon is not dead. And again, death needs to be a permanent thing. I don't think people should be able to come back and assist because the plot calls for it or that the person needs plot armor. Now, when it comes to Jedi, that's a different thing, right? You have Obi-Wan who helped Luke during the Death Star Trench run. To me, that's enough. That's enough. That's all That's all I need, right? I know I made a crackhead video about how Rey versus Palpatine should go, but if you're going to make a crackhead decision like bringing Palpatine back after 60 years, 30 years after his death, then make a crackhead fight between the two of them. Anyway, I agree with this take. I agree, and also, Clone Wars, I don't think it gets really a big pass. I, I can't agree with the whole Clone Wars take, especially too with rebels because obviously they lost they lost uh kanan but in the clone wars yo we lost all the domino squad yo like it was over years but we lost domino squad like it, it's crazy there's so many losses in clone wars and that's where i felt tension in clone wars so i can't really agree with the clone wars take because there were characters like hard case please do tell me like the whole umbra arc that arc was nuts in actuality, all the clones that we saw in Clone Wars, they're all dead. They're all dead now. So it's crazy. But yes, I completely agree with this take here. So my friends, we're at the end of the video here. I'm going to give my three hot takes, right? My first hot take is that there is no best Star Wars film to me because Star Wars has been generational. You come in when you come in and probably one of the first things you see or things you get comfortable with you're going to consider the best right everybody's opinion is different but to me there is no such thing as a best star wars movie because there's things i see that everyone considers best and i'm like well i see crazy flaws with that and there's things that i consider the best that everybody sees crazy flaws with right so for me i don't see there being a best Star Wars movie. Now, to contradict what I just said, I feel that if there were a best Star Wars movie, it would be A New Hope. And because if you really think about it, A New Hope is A, it's the original, right? It gives you everything you want in Star Wars. It gives you lightsaber battles. Yes, Obi-Wan versus Vader in A New Hope is not the greatest duel ever, but the tension, the dialogue, it's, it's, it's all so memorable. Starfighter fights, drama, the Death Star destroying Alderaan, everything. There's not one thing you're waiting to see in A New Hope. For me, when I'm watching Phantom Menace, my favorite Star Wars movie of all time, I'm waiting for the Darth Maul fight at the end of the movie. In Attack of the Clones, I'm waiting for all the Jedi to show up on Geonosis. Revenge of the Sith, waiting for the Anakin and Obi-Wan duel in Order 66. And hell, waiting for the beginning of the, the opening of the movie, because that's to me the best opening in almost any Star Wars movie. Again, contradicting myself. But there's so many other things that have come out and you're you're waiting for something to happen that you're like, oh, this is the best moment in Star Wars. But with A New Hope, to me, the whole movie is an equal playing field of this just feels like Star Wars to me. My next take is that the story of the sequel. So I'll split my two of my two takes. I'll put into one, right? The story of the sequel should have just ended the story of Luke Skywalker. If you want to bring Luke back, you need to conclude his story. Give us his hero's journey. Have it be that Luke is at his lowest point ever. The past 30 years, we're seeing our hero be at his lowest point ever and use it as a story teaching technique to be like, hey, you can bring yourself back from your lowest point in life. Have Luke be down on his luck, just, just not the Luke that we are used to. But by the third film, he is better than he grand master Luke Skywalker. The movie should have focused around him and not around Rey and Finn and all these people. 
Now, my other take on Ray and Finn and all these other people is that it should have been a passing of the torch to new characters who have no ties to the original cast. Ray shouldn't be related to anybody. Ben shouldn't be related to anybody. If that's if that's what you want to have, if you want to have Ben be the big bad guy and it's the, still the plot that Luke lost Ben to the dark side and Ben killed his temple. Okay, cool. That's the exception, but Finn shouldn't be related to anybody. These should be new characters that we know nothing about and a new story that carries on after we finish with Luke's arc of being at his lowest point to his newest point or his best point, excuse me. It should be a passing of the torch that we finally have a full circle Luke Skywalker. We saw him from being a naive, eager fa uh, farm boy to a Jedi Knight to then being at a, his lowest hermit point and becoming a grand master. L Yoda status. So I, that's, those are my two hot takes, I guess, is that the sequels should have just been a passing of the torch instead of, hey, we're gonna kill off Han Solo. We're gonna kill off Luke in the second movie that should be about him. And Luke should not play second fiddle to any character. Not because Luke Skywalker is my favorite character. No, but because like, this is the story of Luke Skywalker. This is all happening because Luke Skywalker failed, right? Yes, Snoke, but Snoke wouldn't be able to do half the things he did if Kylo wasn't out there chopping people down for him. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. It's a little longer than I thought it was going to be, but, you know, if you liked what you saw and want to see more, let me know down below, and I'll see you all in the next one.